Welcome back guys. So as you can probably tell uh, we got the camera back up and running. I'm not going to go through all that right now. I'm going to put that at the end of the video because some of you may not care about hearing about that whole ordeal and so I don't want you clicking off right at the beginning of the video. I'd rather that happen later on so I get at least some watch time out of you guys before <laughs> you go on to the next video. Also at the end of the video, uh, over this past, it's been, been about a week now since I've been out here, uh, got a new new critter that we added to the farm. Gonna show you guys that. As well as there was a little incident with a porcupine over the weekend. So uh, we're gonna include that in there as well. But first off, we are gonna do a whole bunch of work here on the sawmill shed. We're still continuing on with getting the sheathing up. Uh, we got the short side done last week. We're going to be working on the long side this week. Don't know if we're going to get it all done or not, but hopefully we'll get a good chunk of that done. The first thing to work on today is uh, pretty much all of the boards that are up here on this uh, floor are going to go up on the roof. So we're just going to work on trying to knock out a whole bunch of those getting them cut to length because of course with rough sawn lumber it's not cut to length it's just cut to thickness and width. So we'll do that and then we can start working on getting that nailed up on the rafters. sure you guys understand how nice it is to be able to work in the shade up here cutting these boards to length because before of course I've been doing it without this little bit of a start of a roof over top of me so it's been in the Sun now of course next step is to go over there and start putting some of these boards on the rafters so I'm gonna be back in the Sun again but as far as cutting them to length and being in the shade this is really nice Okay, so we've got just a shade over a third of it done up here. We've used up pretty much all the boards that we've cut. Uh, we've still got a few of the six footers over here, but other than that, the rest of them are nailed in place. All right, we're back again today. One thing I didn't mention last night was that I've already gone ahead and cut to length a bunch more boards. I did that last night. All that I didn't get done were the 10 foots and the 6 footers. That's all I've got left to cut the length. Uh, as well as any of the weird boards that might be like a 10 foot but I'm only gonna get 6 or 8 foot of usable board out of it. I haven't cut those to length yet either. So let's go ahead and do that. Knock that out and then we'll get to putting boards up here. I don't know if we're going to get it done today. I kind of kind of think we probably won't, but we'll get done what we get done, right? All right, so we got all of the full length boards cut to length down here. 
So we're gonna go ahead and move those up onto the rafters. Alright, we are down to about four feet left up here to get sheathing on. Now I've gotten to thinking, I, I gotta be careful here otherwise I'm going to paint myself into a corner so to speak. Because the only way that I have to get up here right now is by this step ladder that's right there. Which means that I have to keep enough space right here in between uh, the ridge beam here and how far up the sheathing is so that I can get up and more importantly back down from here because I don't have like a, an extension ladder or anything out here that'll reach up to uh, the edge of the roof. So even if I have enough boards and I have enough time today I'm not going to get this all finished because if I did I'd be stuck up here until someone comes and rescues me. All right, so we are down to two feet left on here. Um, we basically used up all of the wood that we got up here, all the boards that we got cut. So I am going to wrap up today by going down and trying to cut some of these uh, oddball boards, get some more out of those, and then I guess that'll be it for today. Well, we've got the rest of our boards cut. Over here, we have three 10 foot long, 12 inch wide pieces. And then on top, we have two six foot long, six inch wide pieces. So that'll give us 36 feet long and a foot wide. So that covers half of our remaining two feet by 36 feet long that we have to cover. And then over here, we have two 12 foot long, one foot wide pieces, and two four foot long, six inch wide pieces, and two eight foot long, six, foot, six inch pieces. There we go. So that's another 36 feet long by one foot wide, which gives us the remaining lumber that we need to fill in that gap up there. All right, guys, so last night I uh, was just about ready to wrap up for the day and one of our neighbors stopped by. He wanted to see what I was up to, see uh, see what was going on over there. So I didn't really get to wrap up uh, officially last night, but today it was Friday. Today was uh, feed mill run day. So I got about 3,600 pounds of feed in the back of a different truck right now, and I just stopped out here with... Uh, truck and trailer. We're picking up the loader with the uh, the pallet forks on it And we're gonna take this back over to my folks house uh, That's where I've got the feed and that's where all my animals are at the moment and get that unloaded because I really don't want to Try lifting out a one-ton tote of chicken feed on my own. That's just not gonna happen. So 
that's where that guy comes into into play here so since i didn't get to say it last night this is all we're going to get done for this week uh as soon as i finish here i'm going to go to the uh the extra bonus story at the end of the video here if any of you are interested in that as always i appreciate you guys watching and i will see you next week okay so what happened to the camera as you guys saw last week in the video the camera fell off the roof went about 20 feet down landed on top of a piece of wood down on the ground it kind of dented in uh the top of the camera here and then there's a ring that goes around the lens and it had also squished that more into an oval shape instead of being circular so i took it home i got on youtube and looked up how to disassemble this model of camera and sure enough there was a couple videos on how to do that so we took the thing apart i got the ring kind of squeeze back together using a definitely not certified canon tool uh, we won't talk about what it was but it worked it got it kind of circled back up reassembled the camera and turned it on and it kind of worked so the lens you know was able to move and but the only problem was i looked at the screen and there was a couple spots that were a little blurry and it wasn't wanting to focus quite right and it was making some clicking sounds which probably was not good so i disassembled the camera again and this time i disassembled even further like way further beyond what any youtube video uh describes how to do i actually took it down to the lenses and what had happened is i had actually uh, broken the focusing lens on the camera so there's a couple places that had gotten chipped out on it the plastic ring that goes around it and kind of cinders it that had gotten cracked in a couple places as well so that was what the issue was with that part so it got on eBay fortunately I was able to find just a focus lens for the camera here uh, got that ordered and then I reassembled the camera that way I didn't lose any parts waited till the part came in, disassembled the camera again, put in the new focus lens, reassembled the camera again, and it seems to be working all right. It's not 100%. The top's still kind of dented in, but I think it's working good enough. Now, I also mentioned that we got a new critter around the farm. Uh, where I'm at at the moment, I've got all my livestock over at my folks' place. And there really is no predator pressure over there. I think we've had one issue with a fox one time and then a hawk once. And that's been like pretty much it. However, once uh, I get everything moved out here, I already know that there is a very heavy presence of coyotes. Uh, there's also bear around. In fact, the guy that runs the cattle on the farm at the moment, just within the last month or two, uh, he was talking about that he'd actually had a bear rip the door off from his chicken coop and kill all his chickens. So I know that predators are definitely going to be uh, something to contend with once I get uh, transitioned out here. So what I did is I purchased a livestock guardian dog, or if you want to sound cool, an LGD. She's an Anatolian Shepherd, 10 months old. Uh, weighs right around 75 80 pounds she's still got a little ways to go yet probably gonna get a little bit bigger so not a small dog uh, but she is specifically bred for being a livestock guardian so we added her to the the mix here uh, would have been I guess a week ago Friday now and then less than 24 hours after getting her uh, Sunday morning, I went out and took care of the hogs. I was heading over to do the poultry. I said, she's got something on her nose. What is that? And as I get in closer, I go, oh, wait a minute. Those look like porcupine quills. We don't have porcupines around here. No, 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 no. Porcupines, they're farther north. We don't have those. No, no, those are definitely porcupine quills stuck in her nose. So, uh, I attempted to pull them out, but uh, she's a very sweet dog uh, around people, but dealing with something that weighs that much and has that much muscle, there was just no way that I could hold on to her to pull those out. 
So we got to make a trip over. We have a vet school over near Virginia Tech there. Uh, it's also a vet hospital. So we got to make a trip over there Sunday morning. Uh, so they gave her a little bit of, you know, a shot of happy juice there and put her under, pulled those out and got that done. 28 quills was the final count on that. Upon doing some further research on that, uh, we found out that if you look at any of the official websites like the uh, Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, you know, sites like that, they say, nope, we don't have porcupines in Virginia. However, if you start looking around, you start finding these little news articles here and there where people's dogs have gotten into little scrapes with porcupines here and there and it tends to kind of be along the Virginia West Virginia border you know kind of along the northern border of Virginia so as it turns out porcupines are starting to move back down into the area it's been about a hundred years since they were actively in this area apparently they moved a little bit north and now they're moving back south again don't know why but lucky us so I think that covers everything that uh, I was going to go over that's happened over the last weekend. Just a whole bunch of fun stuff. So once again, I guess I'm going to wrap up the video for those of you who have stuck around through me rambling on here. Uh, once again, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next week.